Hello, hello, hello. This is Jenna Cantor. I'm all about the performing arts and physical therapy, and I'm the founder of Powerful Performer. Today, I'm going to be speaking about my story of when I got a stress fracture. It was ooh, in the 90s, in the 90s. Oh, that's crazy when I think about it. I want to say 1997. Wow. Ooh. So I grew up as a ballerina. I was always going to be a ballerina. <laughs> clearly, look at, those who know me now, that's kind of like, oh, well, clearly things changed. I loved ballet. I lived and breathed ballet. I had very, very inspirational ballet instructors. One, Mrs. Derby. She, I still call her Mrs. Derby, <laughs> was the second mother to me at the ballet studio. And she always said that ballet is the air I breathe. And that's just how I look at the performing arts now. But let me get to my journey, how this all began. So I would study very intensely during the weekdays. And I still had a social life and everything in the small town of Petaluma, California. And I got this opportunity because I would go every summer. I would go to a different summer ballet program, Milwaukee Ballet, Ballet Met, all these different places. And it was the summer before my senior year. I got the opportunity to go to Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And their program during the summer was the most intense. I think we would take three to four ballet classes a day, and then you could take an optional fifth one. I might be exaggerating. It might be the optional fourth one. But, I mean, it was you just lived and breathed it. And it was – I it really helped solidify how much I love ballet. Okay. I come back and I, I sign up. I'm going, you know what? I'm going to take this leap. I'm going to go to Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet and study there during my senior year because I want to dance with the San Francisco Ballet back in California. But I know I'll get the training I want and desire at Carlisle, Pennsylvania. It's really small in the middle of nowhere where place and up my game. So I'm there and I get put in a class. I kid you not, I think the girls were five and six year olds. I wasn't even putting people my age because I didn't have natural turnout. So for the, uh, actually, for those who don't know any singers listening in, turnout is just basically when you're rotating at your hips laterally, externally rotate like a book. So that's, and it goes all the way down to your ankles. So I didn't have that. And they, they like to have, you know, a straight 180 across in ballet. And I was quite far from that. Though I was good. I didn't think I was good. But then I look at videos now. I'm like, oh, my God, I was actually good. But, yeah, you're hardest on yourself when you're in it. So I digress. So I'm in these classes with these, with these little kiddos. And it was really hard. And then I'm starting all over with these friends in high school. And and though I really wanted to stay there and I was like planning on it, and I, I left, you know, my hometown going like, yeah, see you later. I'm going to be big after this. Thinking I'm all great. And I was so miserable. I was so miserable. And I remember I got on my mentor's mom. Oh, my God, I don't think she knows this. And she's passed away since this actually breaks my heart that I'm bringing this up. Um, I got on the phone with her and I spoke to my mentor's mom. And I came by my mentor's mom and she had me write a list. I never written really lists before then, which is funny because I love lists now. So she had me write down a list of, you know, pros and cons. And there were like all these cons and the, the, the pro was like, I don't remember what it was. I don't even remember what my pro was, why I should stay. It's like, oh my God, I need to go home. And, oh, oh, not to even mention, oh, I forgot that the place where I was staying, I was staying with this nice family that was housing me, and I made just two, two friends, two male friends while I was there who happened to be black, and I learned very quickly that the people I was staying with just happened to be racist. So it was like I'm starting to make these friends and people who are, are clearly going to be important to me having just like a, a home niche. And I can't even take them to my home because I'm living with racist people. That was mind blowing, especially because I just really didn't grow up with that. And, I, you know, to be exposed to people who had such an old mindset. Yeah. So it just I came back home feeling like it was with my head between my legs, but I was so happy to be going home. I couldn't even keep holding on to the fact that I was giving up on that way to live the dream. And I was also questioning at this point because of everything that 
I had been through, um, uh, you know, with ballet, all the training and everything, I was going, do I want this anymore? And I, that was a big deal. That is a big deal to know your whole life, exactly what you plan to do. And then suddenly something happens and, oh my God, what do I do? So I, I came back home. My friends were so welcoming. Everything, everything right away just made me go, yeah, I'm, I was meant to be here. And although I had missed on casting for the Nutcracker, I was able, they, they allowed me to help out with rehearsing and stuff. And I was still taking classes. So it wasn't like I 100% disappeared. And I wasn't, I wasn't back for long and I was in the middle of a class and we were being taught a small, just a small jumping combination, not a big one, just a small one, like a warm up, you know, jump first, 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 second, second, you know, and I did a really small hop, not even full out. I was just marking it and I felt it in my foot like that just a sudden, and I was like, you know, kind of, you know you know, made my way to the back of the room. I was in the back of the room, so nobody could tell. And I was like walking, I was like, something bad just happened. You know, so I walked over to the teacher and I didn't, I, there, there was this belief that you don't, you don't limp, it's, you know, drama. So I didn't limp over, you know, I walked normally, at least I thought I walked normally. And the teacher said, yes, go, go talk to Mrs. Derby. I went to Mrs. Derby and she said, go to the hospital now. And so I drove home, I called my best friend Pizza, her real name's Angelina, but her family owns a pizza restaurant, so I call her Pizza. Call my best friend Pizza, she rushes over, I'm just crying on the stairs at my parents' place because nobody was home, my parents weren't home, I was devastated, I didn't know what I just did to myself. And I went to the hospital, it turns out I had a stress fracture. So I, it was already just felt like so much, you know? And, oh, I forgot to mention that Shortly before the stress fracture happened, I was in a rehearsal. I wasn't even dancing, and I was watching somebody dance. And it it was in that moment it hit me. I went, yeah, I love this. This is the air I breathe. So I had that aha moment in this whole process. And next thing I know, I got a stress fracture, and I didn't know what that meant. I was put in a cast, and I wasn't in the cast for long because my toes started to go numb. I told the doctor, and so they took me out of the cast, and that was it. I never went to physical therapy. <laughs> I never, I, I don't think my, I know my bone didn't fully heal because I, I still felt pain, but they didn't do anything for me. And nobody told me about the fact that you need to wait for time for the bones. You know, I just, I was given zero guidance. It took, it took like a year, more than a year, a couple of years for the pain to fully go away. Crazy. Right. And I just thought it was like a permanent pain. It was just because they just didn't let me heal. And they didn't, I didn't go to get rehab. It was so crazy, and I remember all this injury stuff is happening, and I and I was always going to be going to a ballet company, but because of this curveball, now I have to apply for schools. That was the last thing I wanted to do. Worst nightmare. So my dad pushed me, you know, and I applied to these schools. I wrote an essay, and I wrote about my experience with with my life changing, you know experience and I applied to a couple schools and it was all about the dance programs. I got into the University of California Irvine, which is was my first choice. And my second choice, it was funny, I didn't get in academically, but then I got I got accepted into their dance program, which just made me laugh. And so at UC Irvine, I I, I looked at myself as a ballerina who couldn't dance on point because I never got the right rehab. And I started taking other course classes and I took a musical theater class saying, and, and that was the like <gasps> moment for me, the getting to do musical theater. So what is the whole purpose of this? I mean, one, first of all, yes, life takes all these unexpected roads, but it's, I want to focus on the stress fracture. I had all this journey, all these things, but it's important to know what happened before and then what I did afterwards regarding this one injury. I didn't seek out help. I didn't ask, I never asked the doctor, does this mean I'm healed? Does this mean I jump back in? Are there exercises? I ha did not have this education available to me as a dancer. I, I had zilch. And when you get injured, it is on you as the performer 
to investigate, to ask questions, to ask more questions, ask, is this enough? Am I pushing myself too much? Am I pushing myself too little? Always, of course, keeping with the goal that you want to get back into dance as soon as possible. I completely understand and relate with that. But it's up to you how you handle your injury. Otherwise, you could be like me where it took me years for the pain to fully go away. So that's why I wanted to get on today. Anybody who's dealing with this, an injury, something, and it could have just literally happened to you today in a matinee. Today's a Sunday. It could have happened to you today in a matinee and you felt something, you're, you know, you ignore it. It's on you. It doesn't mean it's a big deal if you're seeking medical attention. It just means you're checking. You're just checking. This is your body. You were born with only one body. You're born with only one career. So that's it. That's my story at this point that I'm going to share with you. There, of course, is a continuation of my whole journey into musical theater and to physical therapy. But really use this for anybody listening. Please use this as some sort of compelling light bulb for you where you can pay better attention to your body during your career. Or even not a career, even just as an amateur dancer at your dance studio. Because, man, it sucks to walk every single day just simple walking with pain in your foot. All right. Take care, everybody. If you have any questions or anything, please reach out. Take care. Bye.